Hello and welcome back to LGM. Today is part two of a three-part series of videos I'm doing on the Commodore. Commodore. <laughs> Got Commodore on the brain. Hello and welcome back to RGM. This is part two of a three-part series regarding the BBC Micro Model B series of computers and the repairs that they may need through their lifetime. Um, in part one I covered the power supply recapping. Uh, I shall put a link in the description below of all three videos as and when they become available. Um, today's video we're going to be covering the memory issues that you can get and also the RGB sync output issue. So let's get started. The first indication I had of any memory fault was random cursors appearing on the screen. Now this can vary from computer to computer. Some people just get a constant beep. Also, after a while trying to load games, I just got a garbled screen. Everything was just jumbled up and games wouldn't load properly. Once you remove the lid of your computer and the keyboard, you then need to take out the motherboard, making sure to unsolder the cable at the back, the composite cable. Then onto the memory banks. These are in two banks. Bottom 16K highlighted in red. And the upper 16K highlighted in blue. You can switch between these two on boot up to eliminate which bank the fault is in. Jump at S25 in the south equals 16K mode. And the jump at S25 north equals 32K mode. So by switching between these two, you'll be able to find out which bank your fault potentially lies in. Once you've found that out, you can then get your new IC with the computer switched off and sit it on top of each IC. Do this until you find the faulty one. Now this worked for me, it may not work for you because it does depend on the fault of your IC. There are other methods of finding out faulty ICs. You can find these by googling it online. Once you've located your faulty IC, it's time to replace it. The best thing to do once you've removed your old IC is to replace it with a socket. So in the future, if you ever have another fault, you can just unplug the old IC and pop in a new one. Of course, you could be lucky and all your ICs could be socketed to begin with. In that case, you just need to unplug the old one and put in a new one. Right, it's time to remove the first IC. I'm using a solder sucker here. There are various different methods of removing ICs. You have to find the best one that works for you. This one came out relatively easy. In goes the new socket, ready for the IC to be seated in it. Right, time for the test. Yes. Up and running. There we go, I'm back. Let's turn that contrast down a bit. Right, that's, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, on to the next fault. Uh, via RGB, we're getting a picture like this. As you can see, it's out of sync. Done a bit of research on Google. 
and I found out that it uh, is possibly IC48, which is um, the chip that controls the sync for the RGB output. So I say it's working okay via RF, but uh, just RGB, it seems to be like this. So well, I'm going to try piggybacking the replacement chip now to see if this remedies it. Got here a 74L S86. Just by pressure alone, I've seated the chip, fingers crossed. And there we go, it's now working, brilliant. So what I need to do next then is remove the faulty IC, um, I'll put a socket in place and then we'll uh, reseat the new chip. Okay, I'm all set up. Um, it's taking me more time probably to set all these cameras up and the equipment is, than it probably will do to uh, replace the IC itself. So let's get started. So first of all, I need to mark the IC that I'm going to be replacing. Um, IC 48, so 46, 47, 48. That's the third one in. So we've got one, two, three, so it's that one there. Right. First of all, just going to add a bit of extra solder, fresh solder. Some of those I've still got some solder in. Still quite a bit of solder holding it in on the top there. Okay, um, I've managed to get it out. I'm not very happy with um, the condition I've left it in at all. It was a real tough one to get out this was because it was run up against the RF unit. As you can see, some of the um, green coating there has uh, come away from the um, one of the power tracks. Uh, just got to clean this up on that side, look at the other side. I'm using the hot air gun. I've inadvertently ended up heating up the board way too much. As you can see it's uh, changed colour then, it looks like it's slightly blistered. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will still work. Um, as I say, I'm not very happy at all with what I've done here. But it's a learning curve. This is the first time I've used a hot air gun and clearly it was too hot. Um, so, a lesson learnt. Next thing to do then is uh, clean up those buyers there, get some 90% uh, alcohol on, get rid of that flux and get the uh, socket in. Okay as you can see just there's the uh, new IC socket and the socket. Um, the sockets I had were a little bit too big, one pair of legs too long so I had to uh, reduce the size of it. Did that with a craft knife. That's now in place. I'm now going to uh, clean up the flux on the other side. Right, we're going to plug it all back in now and try it. Okay, it's back together now. I'm just giving it a quick look over just to make sure that no components are touching each other. I did notice just now that after handing the board, two resistors were touching each other. It's always worth just having a quick look over just to make sure nothing else is bent or out of place. Okay, it's all plugged in, the board's back in. Um, now it's time to see if it still works after I baked the uh, board there, uh, which I'm so embarrassed about. 
but you live and learn don't you so okay fingers crossed let's see if it still works yes finally we now have RGB output uh, my cup monitor that I've just repaired excellent I'm so pleased Well, there you have it. Memory issue has been resolved and so has the RGB output. I'm not particularly proud of the way I went about removing the IC um, for the uh, video output problem. Um, it was my first time using a hot air gun and I do regret what I did. Um, I hope I don't get too much negativity about this in the comments. It was a learning curve, I'm still learning, and hopefully somebody else will learn from my mistakes. I should not repeat them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, part three will be coming soon where I work on the cub monitor. As always, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll be seeing you.